are we talking about today, Martin? We are talking plumbing. Plumbing. And we are talking electricity. Some electricity. A little bit. It's a lot better now. It's solid. It's not going anywhere. How does it feel? Yeah, it's good. I'm happier with that than the strap that we had. Which was alright, but this is better. As you can see, we have an array of doofler bobs. Stuff and doofler bobs. At the back here, we've got our water tank, which is quite big. Uh, it's been in and out of the boat several times for different reasons. And we finally got it in a few weeks ago and uh, we're really pleased that we've managed to get it in. We had a little bit of trouble uh, fitting the pipe on and uh, with a bit of jiggery pokery, we managed to do that as well. Some very jiggery pokery pokeriness. And um, mainly by tilting it and, and wiggling and all technical things. Um, without really wanting to take off the main uh, brass inlet uh, for a few reasons, but we, we just wanted to get the water tank in. So we could then finish off what we started some time ago with the, the plumbing. Uh, we are tilting the water tank forward and we will um, edge it right underneath it as much as we can and then we will tighten this um, screw it up into that at the top. What I want you to do as you push in here yeah, is use the stick at the top to, to push, push that, that yeah. way because there is a little bit of movement in it but it's not a lot. So okay. I'm going to try and hold it like that. Yeah. And you need to be pushing low. Low. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that's enough? I think it's not quite down at the back anyway, so once it's flat at the back, it yeah. will lift up a little bit at the front. Yeah, well, it will anyway because we need to put boards underneath it. Yeah, yeah. but we've got to get that, get that cable out. Once upon a time, there were pipes. <laughs> it goes further back than that. Once upon a time, there was a, a tank on the bow which we. Um, Goes further back than that. It does. Once upon a time, there was a tank under the bow, yeah. connected in, yeah. which we had to um, cut out, yeah. take the chocks and everything out, yeah. lift out and lift onto the bow so that we could get under there to do all the the stuff that we did in the Monster Under the Bow video. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's its origin story. <laughs> We took the tank out, put it onto the bow, um, we cleaned it, we disinfected it. I mean, it had been sitting on the bow and on top of the roof and everything for about 8,000 years. Yeah, and in the boat. And in the boat. For a long time it was a table. <laughs> <laughs> we filled it with water, yeah. we checked that it was safe, that it, 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 it wasn't leaking. Yeah, there was no leak. When all the pipe works in and everything, yeah. you kind of flush it out anyway. Um, just to make sure, so it, it will it will be disinfected again when we get to that stage. Yeah. So um, that's something to look forward to. <laughs> so we need to treat it because the tank hasn't had any water in it for for ages. I'm anticipating you're not going to be able to manage this, but I'm optimistic. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Yay! <laughs> I can hear the, the sound of the water coming through. Nothing is leaking from there. I think part of the other thing is to see how it deals with pressure. If there's, you know, the pressure of the 400 litres that this tank is supposed to hold. So we found this Aquasol. It's a complete water treatment and will um, 
can purify and kill any harmful organisms and at the same time eradicates foul tastes and odours, keeping stored water fresh and pure. Um, so I'm just going to pop this in. This is 300 mils. Now we've got a tank that's about 400 litres, just a little bit shy of 400 litres. So this bottle um, should just about sanitise, sterilise the whole of the water that's in there. You leave it for 12 hours. So, I mean, you can use this for all sorts of things, but the thing that we're doing is we are um, sanitising and deodorising new tanks and containers, or disinfecting. So we're going to chuck this in there for 12 hours, um, just leave it to do its thing, and, um, and then drain it off, and we should have a nice purified water tank. So we're not just chucking water anywhere, we're using the hose pipe to put it into the canal. I'm going to turn this one on. So we do have water coming out. That's going to take some time, it took about 40 minutes to, um, to, fill, the, to fill the tank um, and this is going to take ages I think maybe even longer than that because it's just uh, the flow that it is okay your tank can fill up with all sorts of bacteria and algae and icky things and um, especially if you are overwintering if you uh, if your boat is kind of sort of standing over winter and you know if you're using it for leisure rather than living on it um, then your water can so we've got uh, the main tap from the tank here which goes into uh, the sensor and the sensor needs to be at the same level as the bottom of the tank and with the sensor you you can um, adjust it so that whatever level it is that that becomes the level the bottom of the tank uh, we haven't done that yet because there's no water or anything so that's calibrating it, isn't so, it? So that, yeah. yeah, that's calibrating it. Um, and so it goes to the sensor and then around this pipe work here, and the metal sheathed pipe is meant to stop uh, some of the vibration you get from the pump. So it's like a sort of shock absorber. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Thing. It just allows it a little bit more, uh, more give. Goes into a filter, which uh, you can clean this. This comes off uh, without, uh, un, you know, without detaching it, sort of thing. Then it goes into the pump, and then again we've got another pipe, another one of the metal pipes, just to again help some of the the vibration, and then that goes into the accumulator, and this is an eight liter accumulator. They're both on these wooden brackets so we could move them around and get the right position with the piping and uh, joints. But mainly it's uh, this, they're both sat on this uh, neoprene uh, sound insulation which is used in cars and Land Rovers and that kind of thing around engines. And it, it's really sort of dense stuff. So even though the pump itself has got little rubber uh, shock absorbers where you screw it into the into the uh, floor or in this this case the the, the frame uh, it's not enough it's still quite loud yeah. so the idea is that this will take a little bit more of that away and w I did it on the uh, the accumulator as well uh, just because we've we've got the stuff we will do more on this wall as well just to sort of quieten this this pump down. It's, it's not that bad and I think once the wall's up it'll be okay but it'll be nicer to you know minimize any sort of vibration or uh, unnecessary sound. Yeah. Well and so we don't have a heart attack when it kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We I nearly had a heart attack when it, <laughs> we were testing the electrics and I, and I was I'd switched them on on the bottom and I could hear this <laughs> what's that what's that what's that Forgot that I'd connected the pump. That's yep. that's what it was. Mm. 
So after the accumulator, it then splits off into two. Uh, the cold water goes down the uh, starboard to the kitchen and then the calorifier and then down on the port side it goes as far as the uh, bathroom for cold water. Um, yeah, I think that's my bit done. That's your bit done. Mm. I can't remember what I did in my bit. So I did the I did most of the electrics. Shall I get in there? Yeah we can we can Should swap. We swap? Yeah, we can. So basically what we've got is a sensor connected to the gauge as we've said before connected to the pump connected to the power source well, when we got our pump it had um, blades attached to the connectors so that pretty much tells you what connector you're going to use so we went and we got sheathed connectors and we used a proper crimping tool for all of the electrical work that we've done on the boat um, and once we've got once we've actually once we feel confident that we've got the right level of, of wire here because if I've got too much of it I am going to crop it back a little bit and then change that connector once it's connected properly I'll put that little sheath over it I'll heat shrink it so that it forms a better seal a more waterproof seal this little bit here um, it's just to indicate that it's going to a red uh, cable, um, so it's acting as positive. Um, and our blacks are all negative. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I did. It's not a lot. I mean, it felt like a lot when I was doing it. Much of it was, you know, making sure really that we had the right kind of connectors because we didn't have the right, we didn't have... Um, we didn't have any blades. We didn't have any of the female mm. connectors for the blades. We only had the male one. We only had the blades, which was really frustrating. Yeah. Um, and of course, it was a Sunday afternoon when we were doing this, and everything had just closed. And yeah. oh. anyway, so it's done. What we're going to do is, um, as you can see, this is in some form of conduit. We will put some board at the back here and fasten this in place yeah. and we'll attach them to these little battens that we've got at the top here which is where the conduit popper is and uh, um, that we glued into the ceiling. We're one step closer. We're always one step closer. Sometimes we're one step closer and then about 5,000 steps back yeah, yeah. but often we're just one step closer. With the pump you can have them laying down on the floor um, mm. and you can have them vertically with the pump part at the bottom. Um, a lot of people do that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, that, that's quite common. The reason I haven't done it that way is mostly to do with sound. The more of it that's in contact with the floor, the louder the sound is because there'll be more vibration. And what happens is that the subfloor, which is what we have here will just act as a speaker because there's a surface and then there's a hollow underneath and it'll just sort of vibrate and re you'll, you'll get reverberation and it'll just get louder and louder. It's a small thing but when you when you like peace and quiet it, it's it makes important. A difference, yeah. If you raise it up off the floor then there's less things uh, that it's going to vibrate against. Yes, it's vibra vibrating against the sort of uh, wooden pillar at the back, but that's already has nothing around it, so that's not touching anything. So it's got nowhere to go, and therefore uh, it will lessen the sort of sound. So we have tested it, I mean, in terms of turning it on and off, haven't we? Okay. And we've tested the gauge, that, that works as well. Um, we are getting closer to filling that tank up and having running water in our boat. Mm. Yes. I mean, like really, really close to it. Yeah. yeah. We've got pipes that run all the way down the boat. We've got radiators connected. Mm. We just haven't got sinks or taps. Yeah. Or showers. Or yeah. baths. Yeah. Or any of that. But that's, that's another day. It's another day. 
if you've got any questions or any suggestions then uh, please um, put put a comment below we had some lovely comments on uh, on, a, on the last video so people were asking us what we're going to make the bath out of because we said we we're going to make the bath and we are going to make the bath because it, we're going to make it as a Japanese soaking tub we're going to make it out of cedar um, we're gonna waterproof it probably using an epoxy like an epoxy resin but we don't yet know there's all there's a few different ways of being able to waterproof it but um, that's what we're we're thinking of at the moment but it's it's going to be made out of cedar so thank you for asking um i hope that answers that question yeah um yeah okay so ask us some more and give us lots more suggestions uh to help us we do listen to you and we do you know we read all the comments and we reply as and well. we reply as much as we can mm. you reply more than i do so thank you and we'll see you soon bye, bye, -bye.